With the introduction of masks into Adobe Camera Raw, I find myself using quite a number of them, even in a project that doesn't take very long. Using shortcut keys to create the masks and familiarity with the sliders within the masks is the key. It does do wonders for the confidence as well to capture and edit an image. That's good enough for you to want to show others, despite the conditions not being very good. The auto will point us in the right direction and it'll give us a very good starting point for our manipulations. Now the first thing we notice is the image hardly has any colour at all. So isn't this a good time to discard it? Let's go for a monochrome and I'll take the saturation fully off. Now if we look up at the histogram, we can see the clipping warning for shadows is already on. We're losing a little bit of detail, but it's only in that rock in the foreground. I'm going to drop down the exposure a bit, a bit more impact. I'm going to spread my whites a little bit to increase the contrast. I can go a long way before anything lights up, so I'll just back off away from them. So I've got a lot more contrast there now. I'm going to step up the clarity. That looks pretty good, and maybe even a little bit of dehaze. Now, once I reach this point, I really need to turn to those masks. I'm going to start with a mask on the sky. So selecting the masks, let's go straight to select sky. When we're selecting the sky like this, it does a pretty good job, but we can only take it so far. I'm probably going to need to add a graduated mask as well. So let's take down the highlights. Let's take down the exposure there. You can see the rain in the distance that was rapidly approaching this beach. Maybe I'll try to spread the whites and the blacks a little bit. Maybe the blacks more than the whites. And even maybe a little more clarity and just a touch of dehaze. But you can still see right at the top of the sky, we've got a little bit of a weakness. So here's where the shortcuts come in. Touching the G key, I get my graduated mask, click and drag. Now I can just drop the tones down at the top. Going to need one of those at the bottom as well, I think. So I'm going to do exactly the same again, G key, and come up from the bottom. I'll drop that down, maybe spread the blacks and the whites again to increase the contrast. That leaves us weak on the left and right side, so I'm going to hit G once again, click and drag, drop down the exposure, blacks and whites a little bit, maybe up of just a tiny amount. Same thing on the right hand side, G again, so that's four times I've hit that key up to now. Let's drop down the exposure here, and once again, blacks and whites. And in a very short time, we've already got something now. Let me go back and get rid of that palette there for a moment. We've got something worth pursuing, I think. Now I'd like to do something with the shadows on that rock. Now I could use a brush for this, but I've got a sneaky suspicion that if we ask Photoshop to select the subject, it'll do a good job. Well, as you can see, it has. So I'm going to drop the shadows up. So I put a bit more light into the rock. Maybe a little bit of exposure, but not much more. I may want to go a bit further with the shadows. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think we can go up quite a bit with the shadows and throw a little bit of light into the image. Now I'm going to turn to my brush tool. And once again, a shortcut key of K. The brush appears on screen, I can control that with the bracket keys. I've got the flow rate for the brush set at around 19. What I'm going to do here is to bring the shadows down a little bit and a little bit of exposure. Because what I want to do here is just darken a little bit of the water here to make a little more of the highlights and we'll touch those in in a moment. This is all going to be to personal taste of course. Then I can hit that K key once again 
and actually increase the highlights just a touch, a little bit of exposure, but not very much at all. Maybe just to lift some of these around here, keep our interest on the foreground so that we're brought nicely into the picture. Finally, one more shortcut key, the J key. Click into the frame or double click into the frame and we get the radial mask. Hit the X key and we invert it. Now all we need to do is to drop the exposure down and really pour some impact into the image. I'm going to open this up now into Photoshop. Two quick jobs to do with this image to bring it to an end. Let's go to image, image size, unlinking the chain link between width and height. I'm going to increase the width to 87 there. So I'm going to add pixels on the width, but not the height to make a bit more of the panoramic shape. Then I'm going to go to my filters. I'm going to apply a Nick filter. Now I do need to quickly go back to image mode and RGB just to switch it back then filter Nick collection silver effects pro I know exactly which filter I want because I've become quite familiar with it so I'm going to go straight to it on this occasion in the interest of speed this is the one look at the picture as I click it looks pretty good doesn't it it's taken the image one stage further. Let's open this back up into Photoshop. Now, Nick filters are applied to a separate layer. So I've still got my original and the filtered version. And of course, we should save these as a Photoshop file. But I think we've got a pretty good result. And although it's taken seven minutes, seven minutes well spent.